Okay, so the thumbnail is a clickbait. You cannot just drill a hole into a display and expect it to still work. But before you close this video, I do have a knob over a display and it works just as you might expect. So you can turn the knob and the display will update based on that. And so in this video, I will show you how I made this project. And there are actually similar knobs out there. Like here is one example from the microchip technology, which looks pretty cool. And in this example, it's using the touch screen. So it's like moving your finger over the touchscreen, but instead of using your finger, the knob is actually pressing the touchscreen layer. And just to be clear, that's different from my project as I'm not using touchscreen. I mean, I do have a touchscreen on this display, but it would work even without the touchscreen. And I guess another way how you can make this project is to stick some small microcontroller into the knob itself and then wirelessly send the data. And with all those small Xiao boards like this one, this is the Xiao ESP32, or maybe this board, this is the Code Cell ESP32 board from Microbots. If you use big enough knob, it might be possible to fit everything inside, but that's also not the case for my project. So how did I make it? Well, before I tell you, I need to tell you about the sponsor of today's video. And you probably know the sponsor because it's sponsoring a lot of my videos. Yeah, it's a PCB way. And the nice thing is that they are offering all of those services, which I would be using anyway. So PCB or PCB assembly or assembly stencils, but it goes way beyond just PCB services. They offer things like 3D printing, injection molding or CNC machining. And I have used their CNC machining service to create this great looking aluminum knob. And so what's the secret behind this project? Well, if you turn the knob, you can see it. There is a magnet inside the knob. And then below the display, this little chip can read the magnet orientation. So if I put the display back over this chip, the rotary magnetic encoder module, I can just use a magnet and rotate that magnet and get the very same result. Now, obviously, for this setup to work, I need the display as thin as possible and I need the magnet as strong as possible. And initially, I was using this huge magnet, but this round one seems to also be working just fine. What's important is the magnet polarization. Usually, those round magnets will have south pole on one flat side and the north pole on the other. And if you rotate such magnet, the magnetic field is not changing. So you need a polarization like this, so rotating the magnet also rotates the magnetic field. And that's pretty much it, that's the whole secret. But let me show you a few more things so you can understand what's going on. Starting with my older video, so I already have a video about the knob over the display. The only difference is that this knob is not going through the display, it's just next to the display. And the display is the OLED display, but I think it's still a nice project. I will put the link to this video down in the description. But back to our project. First of all, the rotary magnetic encoder is connected to the Arduino Uno, but pretty much any microcontroller can be used. The module name is MT6701 and usually the first step is to see if there is any Arduino library available, which there is. And if I open the documentation for that library, there are some informations saying that you can connect this module in a few different ways. I'm using the i 2 c connection, even when it's not really recommended, but it's because I only need four wires, the ground, the power supply, the SDA, the serial data, and the SCL, the serial clock. And I'm also using the i 2 c because on the board itself, those connections are really tiny, and the i 2 c connectors have the biggest spacing, which is great for my bad soldering skills. After soldering this and connecting to the Arduino Uno, I can open a provided sketch, Upload it to the Arduino board and open a serial platter and see if rotating the magnet makes any difference, which seems to be the case. And of course, when working on this project, the most important thing for me was finding out if the magnet could be far away from the board and still work. So to make the alignment easier, I 3D printed this holder in which I can put the board and also the display. And now the magnetic encoder is right in the middle, but since there is nothing on the display yet, I have also 3D printed this overlay, so I know where to put the magnet. And after opening the serial monitor or the serial platter, I can see that it still works, which is great. I haven't talked about this display. This is the intelligent Devin display, similar to other intelligent displays, like for example, the NextGen display. Which means that this display has a chip and a memory and is responsible for updating the screen and drawing images and doing all the heavy lifting stuff. And I have some videos with DVIN displays on my channel, like for example this one with the Ford Focus RS gauges. 
or this video with the gear indicator and that one is actually using the very same display. To make the display work, I need to first create and export all those images which I will be showing on the display, then import those into the Deviant Degas tool and upload this to the display. And just to see if that works, I have put an invisible slider on the top of the display so I can test the animation. So now it's just a matter of reading the magnet rotation with the magnetic encoder module connected to Arduino and sending the correct value from the Arduino to the Deviant display, in other words, telling the Deviant display which image to show. And for that a serial communication is used, the UART communication, and that usually requires two wires, the TX and RX, one for the transfer and the other for receiving data. But since I only want to send data to the display, I can just connect one wire from Arduino to this board and the RX2 is for receiving data. And so as you can see, if I connect everything together, it works as expected. I can rotate the magnet and it updates the content on the display. And so at this point I was extremely happy and I decided to finish the project by 3D printing a knob that will hold the magnet. I mean, first I was hoping to reuse some of my knobs that I have, but I wasn't able to find the proper fitting bearing and the magnet in the correct size, so I decided to 3D print my own knob. So heading over to the Autodesk Fusion, I have created the knob made from two parts, one which is not moving and that one will be glued to the display, and the second part which is the actual knob that will rotate and hold the magnet. So I 3D printed this on my Bambulab X1C 3D printer, inserted the bearing inside and the magnet and the second 3D printed part and put it over the display and it didn't work. I mean it kind of works but it's not very precise. Sometimes it's slow and sometimes it's fast and most of the time it's just jumping around. And that was kind of confusing, actually that was very confusing. I mean the magnet alone works but when I put it inside the knob it's not working. How is that even possible? Well it turns out that the bearing is the problem. It's made from a metal and the magnet is small but it is strong enough to somehow magnetize the bearing and the magnetic encoder is not only picking the magnetic field from the magnet but also a little bit from the bearing and it's kind of confused. And I was thinking about all the possible ways how to solve this problem and I know there are some bearings without metal but I wasn't able to find the correct size. And at some point I was even considering 3D printing the bearing, by the way there are some great models and videos for that. But in the end I made something much simpler. I have moved the bearing away from the magnet as far as possible, which unfortunately meant making the knob bigger, using 15mm height instead of the initial 10mm height, but I think it still looks nice and fits the display. And most importantly, I can make this knob from aluminium, again using the CNC service from PCBWay, and it just looks incredible. If you want to try this project on your own, there is a link to the GitHub page down in the description. It has all the Arduino code, all the code for Deviant Display, the 3D print files for the knob, even the Fusion files, and of course all the links to the used parts, so the bearing, the magnet, the display, the magnetic encoder, and the magnet itself. And I know that this video is slightly different from my usual videos, I haven't gone over every single step like I usually do. Please let me know in the comment section if this is what you prefer, or if you would still like to see a proper video tutorial with all the steps described. And with that said, that's all for today, thank you again very much for watching and I hope to see you soon, thanks and bye.